Viva, viva, viva. Market update very quick, but not so quick. Market update. Let's go, guys. Market's getting far up. It's the same time it's cooling down. So you know how it goes. In crypto, we're in a bad market. Don't forget. But let's let's check it out. The fear and greed index. Uh, as you can see, last week, last month, we were kind of pumping a little bit. So, of course, fear and greed index would have probably just go up and did go up to 31 um last week 27 yesterday actually i pumped a little bit so now we're back to 25 and for the next few weeks i believe will be probably just going down there's not much uh going on so all right, so yeah, there's a few things here I wanted to show you guys when uh we actually we just look at a just look at fear greed index, but there's some info here at the bottom. When you go to the site, I don't know if when you go in to check it out the grid index, have you scroll down to see what's down here? So look at this. This grid index over time, so you can see. For the crypto, since what? Since November, this is the monthly thing. So, uh, if you can see, it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say stable, but it's pretty flat, you know. So, which is pretty good, in my eyes, of course. So we can see in three months, yeah, not so bad. A year, yeah. Now you see the high spikes and all the stuff here. So, and then um. It's like here in the Y measure fear greed, data sources, volatility, market momentum, volume 25, social media. So there's a lot more info here at the bottom that you can actually check it out. So just wanted to mention that. Um before we go in, let's check it out what we came here for. Let's check it out our beloved BTC. All right, so we're looking at uh at uh well let me see uh, I think I'm uh daily or four hour trying to fit. Let me let me see here. Let us see here, guys. Okay, we are at the four hour time frame. As you can see, last video we we came out with uh resistance and uh support that Bitcoin has as the encounter right here. So we have a few retests in there. So Bitcoin is holding this, uh, what do you call it? This 15, 16,000 uh, support. And we drew a, a trend line from 18 to 15. And what we saw is, uh, you know, Bitcoin retested there, kind of pumped there, went in. Did another retest on this trend line and it just broke out. Broke out. We draw another trend line here. Bitcoin retested some, broke out, and then now it's actually below the trend line. So I was, you know, I was telling you guys that I wouldn't see BTC uh, going above the 20K. So it's interesting that. BTC actually Bitcoin actually just touched seventeen four hundred. We it, it didn't even come closer to what I was expecting eighteen nineteen. So, but I was saying between the seventeen thousand, it would probably I uh, you know we get a uh a bounce back or uh a retrace back to uh to what we are. So that's actually what's happening. BTC actually got rejected at seventeen thousand. Uh, so right now we, you know, right now on a four time frame, we, we, we actually have a, a, uh, let me just pull this out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a, a bit of, uh, uh, a pumping here is happening. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of news, what's going on. So that might explain a little, what's going on a little bit. But you know, the correlation between the stock market and Bitcoin hasn't uh disappeared yet. So whatever's going on in the market, uh uh on the stock market, 
you know, it will, will always for now influence the crypto market, especially Bitcoin prices. All right, so let's take a look at daily time frame. What we see, we can take that trend line. We can remove that. So you can see on a daily time frame, we have a a, a very strong uh, support here between fifteen to seven. Uh, 16 15 to sixteen thousand, so it's holding pretty good he actually broke out so on a daily time frame what i'm i'm seeing are actually a bullish i'm seeing uh uh if you draw it like that you can see he's making a a bull flag you know so we we'll, might expect a, a breakout to 17 again uh retest for 17 again we might see that. So who knows? Or well, we might come and even retest the 18,000. Because, you know, right here, we have a very strong, <laughs> very strong resistance from the 18,000. So, but right now on a daily time frame, I'm seeing a bull flag forming right now. So don't be surprised if we see a, a breakout that happen between the end of this week or even next week. Or even today, who knows, right? <laughs> Let's just check out the volume to see how. Okay. Not bad. It's not as low as uh, back uh, Tuesday. So it, it's okay. There's more volume, actually. So it's not the type of volume we get really excited, but it, it's still, we got, we got some pretty good uh, volume. So we can do some trades. All right. So let's take a look at a weekly time frame. Uh, I'm very excited in the monthly time frame. I'll tell you guys why. Uh, let me just, just remove that so we can see what's going on. Okay. As you can see on a monthly time frame, on a monthly time frame, we actually. We're holding uh the fifteen thousand, but it's not really secure. You know, it tests the once, twice, three, four. Okay, but you know, I, I wouldn't say the we're seeing something like that for me. We might if that what's happening, which means we're probably forming a uh, uh a bear uh, a bear flag which means we might see uh, another drop down to BTC. That's why I like the monthly time frame because it actually tells you really what's going on uh, in the long term. So uh, we can take a take a look back in June. The same thing happened. Look at that. BTC was actually forming a, uh, a bear flag. He did. And what happens next? He actually dropped. And then we had another one in September that BTC formed another bear flag. And what happened? November, they dropped. So BTC has becoming uh to show us the this pattern that pumps a little bit, forms a bear flag in a monthly time frame and just and drops another leg. So is it might be doing this the same thing. It might be happening again, so we might have another leg down to, to probably ten thousand. You know, I don't want to speculate, but I've told you guys way before, way before BTC was even close to a eighteen thousand seventeen that he might drop to twelve thousand. Or um, there's a video on my channel you can actually check it out. My prediction. I'm not gonna predict it again unless I see it hits my tar target, and then I'll. I'll just go back and do some research to see how far we might go down. <laughs> my apologies, guys. My apologies. <clears throat> All right. So let's go back. Let's go back. All right. So we are, I was actually looking at weekly time frames, not a monthly time frame, guys. Um, my apologies here. Uh, now let's go to a monthly time frame. 
that was weekly time frame that we were actually checking it out. So on the a monthly time frame, wow, this is so clearly, guys. You can you can clearly see that BTC is forming a beautiful bear flag. So how far we can go? I don't know because you know right over here we we talking about thirteen thousand. And BTC is very close to hit that. So, uh, 13,000, we have a, uh, well, just uh, clear this out so you guys can actually see it. Um, 13,000, we have this support, support, support right there. So, the strongest support that I see it right now, if it hits the 13 to 12,000, it's right over here, and which is 10,000. 10,000, we have a lot of support. So right over here, here, and here. This is a very strong support. If um, Bitcoin comes to that point, comes to 13 to 10,000, if it doesn't hold, the next one is, you know, is probably 3,000, 5 to 3. 5 to 3, this is a very strong as well, but Guys, uh, we don't want to see BTC going all the way down there. Uh, you know, for for us traders, beautiful. For us uh, investors, not so good, but one of the greatest opportunities. BTC drops down to that point. That will be a great, great opportunity. Great. And, um, you know, I do want things to get cheaper especially the the good projects uh because uh one thing that is clear the home market is full of crap and trash so we need to clear it up things like fdx and stuff like that so we have uh, attracted a lot of scammers a lot of bad characters so and uh affect all of us man so it's it's been crazy just a couple months it's been very crazy all right, so now let's take a look at what's going on in the market. There's a couple of news that I want to mention before we move on. So far, you know, BTC is looking, uh, it's not looking too excited, but for a swing trader, it's been pretty good. You know, if you would have bought right over here, uh, you would have bought right over here and... You you sell it right here at seventeen. That would be beautiful, beautiful, great, great. And then you can kind of sell it right here and then take a profit of fifteen because it's coming down again, guys. Beautiful. All right, so let's take a look. What's the what's going on in the market? So, uh, one second. Uh, there's a new uh the beat uh Biden S actually uh. It has had asked the audience to um to confirm the reserves, and Binance has shown that it has a, a Bitcoin uh reserve, a hundred percent backed by BTC, which is pretty good, you know. If we want to trust in that, so it is good to know that Binance actually has uh a, a hundred percent backed the reserve of BTC with real Bitcoin, all right? So Binance.us cuts fees as crypto exchanges battle for assets after FTX implosion. Firm offers zero fee Ethereum trading, native token discount. Binance also offering volume-based markdown other discount. So because people have really like myself and a, a a lot of other people we we know we we had that I've been told you guys a lot as well that do not leave your your coins or do not leave your especially your your coins and your money that you actually um uh investing for a long term do not leave in exchanges especially in you know, the uh, centralized exchanges so now a lot of people have taken their crypto out of the the centralized exchanges and put in a cold store uh wallet. So the only thing to to gain trust, they gotta do something. 
and Binance is stealing the game, so they got to do something. That's what they're doing. They're cutting fees, and they're offering a lot of more to to users so they can pull back the users to their sites. All right, so let's take a look at what the New York Times are saying. The crypto industry struggled for a way forward. Of course, the trust is broken, guys. The trust has broken. But one thing I wanted to uh, you guys to make sure you guys understand here. Blockchain did not fail, guys. Crypto did not fail. It's not about crypto. It's not about the blockchain. The blockchain works. It's wonderful. It's secure. It's trustful. It's 10 times way better than our system, our financial system. What fell is the centralized services. They came in and they're trying to explore the 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 native of the crypto market. Crypto is supposed to be the centralized. It's supposed to be something that that no one controls. But when you come in and you centralize percentage of that, of course it won't work. Because we we've seen on uh our financial system how that things just not working. And you know it's have fallen so many times that we keep pushing uh systems that don't work. So one thing you gotta be really clear why crypto or why blockchain is the future is because everything happened, FTX, uh, Sol um, Solana is part of the FTX drop. Uh, what I mean is Luna, Celsius, now Block5, and other big uh, companies that were uh, crypto uh, companies, they all were centralized companies. So all those, uh, they were centralized, they, they weren't really, really uh, full 100% using, well, blockchain, what crypto is supposed to be, which is the centralization uh, of things. So blockchain still works wonderful. <laughs> Nothing has failed, guys. Just be in mind, the blockchain crypto has not failed, guys. What really happened is the centralized services, they didn't work. You know, they didn't work. There's always a guy behind that that might have some uh, bad intentions to uh, to bring to the market so this is what we hear now so the crypto industry struggle for a way forward of course they, they we're gonna see that for a couple more months until something happened to probably the something breaks the government comes in and they just pump a lot of money a lot of uh, um, liquidity in the market see people to come in incentivize people to expand so we can have those market, the stock market pumping a little bit more. So crypto will actually get the, the liquidity as well. So for now, don't be discouraged. Uh, learn what crypto it is. Learn what blockchain is, how it will affect our lives from from here to the future. Uh, understand what's the, what's the project they actually utilize blockchain. And I understand how you can spot great projects and start investing because a lot of those projects, I told you guys, there's almost 13,000 projects uh, right now, probably a little, little less now, but still a lot. All, most of those projects are garbage. And now the, the, the Security Exchange Commission from the United States, they want to come in with all their force and all their authority they're going to regulate the crypto market. So the crypto market from from what we saw 2000s from now, it will be, look very different from 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 now to from the future because a lot of those coins will be considered as securities. So, you know, so we'll see a crypto market, uh, a future way different than we 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 got back in in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So just be in mind. So when you do your research, when you want to do, if you're going to reinvest in some other project, a uh, new project, look that. Look that later on, governments will come in. They're going to regulate it. And you got to invest in projects that when the regulations come in, it won't break the that project. It will actually elevate it, does the, the project that you invest. So, don't 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 neglect that. All right, so 
The implosion for the exchange FTX shows how an industry built in the, the wake of 2008 financial crisis has drifted far from its original ideal. That's what I was just telling you guys right now. The original ideals for the crypto market is the centralization of services. The centralization, uh, a good example of the financial system. A system that is centralized. No one is there to tell, okay, that guy gets that, that guy can do that or do that or that. So those ideals, they got out of the way because people were make so much money. The the whole formal thing came in and just corrupt everybody. So, all right. So the Wall Street Journal, what did you say? SEC. For those that don't know what SEC is, it's the Security Exchange Commission. Faces call to boost crypto exchange enforcement after FTX collapse. Agency hasn't taken action against the major crypto exchange. The spy scratching. It's interesting how this guy here that we see right now, this guy scam a lot of people over ten billion, and he's still free. He's still doing his thing. He's still even um, I I heard a couple of. Um, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, show Twitter, uh, uh, tell uh, what do you call it? It's Twitter, uh, it's what do you say? It's Twitter, tw Twitter space when, uh, you can make calls with a group of people and, and, a, you know, do whatever topics you want. He, he was invited one of those and he says, uh, on his last a hundred thousand, his last credit card. Come on, guys, you still have $100,000 and you still have a couple credit cards. What about the people that you scam? Come on. Yeah, it's not like too far, guys. All right, let's um, take a look at it. After FTX collapse, pressure bills for a tougher crypto rules. See what I'm saying? I was telling you guys before. There will be so much pressure for the government, not just the United States, the government, the different countries they're gonna come in and just uh reinforce whatever launch they want the cryptos to work. So that's what I was saying. Uh crypto will look completely different from now on. Especially when the uh when governments come in with full force and they want to capitalize. This is a great opportunity for the governments as well. They're gonna come in, they can regulate it. They gotta be careful not to break the 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 evolution of the technology because at the end of the day, blockchain is the future. Whether you like it or not, it is the future. It will evolve as well. You know, it won't stay the way it is. It will definitely evolve, and we'll see how the this the Bitcoin uh blockchain is actually evolved. There's so many applications on top of the block the, on Bitcoin that is being built. So it's not just the Bitcoin that's it's being built within the the system. The FTX crisis brought investors to the centralized exchanges. Here's why they might leave. Okay. People forgot about what's the whole idea with the blockchain. Soon as something huge as the FTX happened, we go back to the ideals, the original idea, which is the centralization of the system. <clears throat> uh, not going to read this article. So, we just start actually taking a look what's going on around the news. After the fall, what's next for crypto? See? FTX collapse sends shockwaves through the coin, basis stocks and bonds. So it's affecting everybody. Everybody. You know Coinbase is a is a public company now. Now and you saw what's happening in the news. People are actually still freaking out. The news is pumping negative uh, news. So the there's not much incentive uh, for us to get really excited in terms of buying new projects. So, but just be, be, be patient, do your research, find out great projects that are still working well and find out those projects. They actually have some plan to be compliance with the, whatever regulation that's coming in. A good example is the OMI. OMI, I talked that before, one of my one of the projects that I really love. 
way before the regulation, way before we talk about regulation, all the stuff. Whatever service they do, whatever NFT they do, they go and they uh, they consult the lawyers, they consult their restriction, uh, the legal uh, advisor. And they always, one thing they, they, they keep saying on the calls when they make with the community is that they want to make sure they are compliance for whatever regulation it is around such as things as art. For instance, because Omi is part of the NFT movement. You know, they, they sell NFTs. So they want to know what, what's, what's in the space of art. Is there any regulation around it that the government might use that to come in and, and inject it to the NFT? So they, they and this is one of the projects that you, you guys really, really have to look at. Um, they've been doing uh, a great job so far. They have uh, great partners, so which is very good. Companies uh, the have made their names in the market for as long as long as we know. Okay, so we just going to take a look at blockchain. Center, I just wanted to, you guys to take a look to see how far is Bitcoin now on the radar. The radar right now is basically a fire cell. That's what they say. What they say is that Bitcoin is in a point that is very cheap. It's very cheap. Is on their point of view, is this is the time when you start doing your DCA. I'm not saying you guys have to do it now. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I just wanted to show what the data is actually saying. Um, if you wanna, you know, uh, follow what they saying because of history. If you look at it, here they have uh, what year is this? 2011. Bitcoin hit the fire sale right here. Next year, what happened? And we had a a, a a huge, a huge pump. And then Bitcoin on 2017, uh, 15, got back to the fire sale range, 17. And then bull market, boom, back to the fire. To, that was a small one in 2020. Which is uh, I believe that's that's when we had the pandemic. He got back to the fire sale. What happened next? We had that huge bull market of twenty twenty one, and then what happened? We back to the fire sale. We might go. We might stay here for a long until the end of uh twenty twenty three, and then twenty twenty four. We had this beautiful bull market. To the sky, why the boom market might happen only in 2024. The reason why I'm saying is because of Bitcoin having Bitcoin have is every four hours, every four years, and we have a, a Bitcoin have So, if you do want to follow, uh, he's a website that's called. Uh, buy Bitcoin worldwide dot com. They have a, a clock that every four four for a year they haven't. Uh, they they keep tracking. So right now we're still uh four hundred and eighty days away from the next having, which will be in April first, uh, twenty twenty four. So it's a good thing if you wanna uh when you do your research to see what the if the Bitcoin is falling the this pattern that is being falling for as long as we know. So if it still follows the same pattern, so which means that we might only see the the bull market in twenty twenty four. But right now there's so many uh variants. Uh for instance the inflation is very high. Uh the feds they might pump liquidity way before the twenty twenty four starts. So there's so many things that might uh conflict this pattern. Or we might just have a break, the you know we the late recession, and we just stay, uh, flat, for uh, until we get to the to the heaven. So no one knows. The only thing we have to know is just there's so many data, so many data here for us to follow and keep tracking what we do or what was going on in the market. So.
The last thing I wanted to show you guys as well is Bitcoin have imposed bold vision for 2024. Yeah, there's a lot of people. A lot of people are, are expecting that 2024 is the year that we have the biggest boom market of all time. So will that happen? I don't know. Who knows? All right, guys. So this is it. This is it. Uh, a, it was a, a really big uh event ftx what happened to ftx it could happen to other exchanges as well there's so many exchanges they they uh they launch their old tokens and you know they they have the same system that ftx so this whole mess it might not have ended yet so just uh just be aware of that um if we uh, before we end it Let's just go take a look at Coin, uh, Coin Gecko right now, and we'll see how many coins they still have in market. So, I like to just uh, go over here. As you can notice, the liquidity is very low as well. It's very low. It's thirty nine. Uh, look at that. We still have, uh, at the point of the bull market, we were close to fifteen thousand at uh, present. Right now, as you can see, we're still at 13,000. There's a lot bit more to clean it up. So imagine if we Bitcoin hits 12,000 to 10,000, you'll be surprised how many projects will be left here. There'll be a lot of projects. Even if they are listed here, they'll probably just start. They, they're done. They're done. They, they're still listed, but they're done. There'll be a lot, lot of projects that are going to disappear. When I when I got into the crypto market, so uh the this this coins here the, from number one to number ten is completely different, guys. It was completely different. The only ones that you see here that I they were still in the top ten is only Bitcoin and Ethereum. As you know, I've been telling you guys for as long as, as you know me that you know the priority here is that small. It's only BTC and Ethereum, you know. That uh, that's pretty much it, guys. And I'll tell you what to do. Just <laughs> tell you what I see and what I, uh, you know, that's what what I do. All right. So, like the video, subscribe, and see you later, guys.